Sorry, Madam Mayor, we're outside. Uh, would we like to address tonight that after reviewing the BRT report and studying all the information, we believe that a lot of that information is incomplete and some more information needs to be put into it. Uh, with conversation with Ed Benito and others, we believe that there's more vacancies that can be added into that particular list that would give it more credence as, as the golden handshakes. So I guess the current level of uh, golden handshakes are 24. The vacancies we got the other day were, for me, it was 84. In the BRT, there's only 61. Now these 23 other vacancies that could be included into the mix. And our belief is that you would go ahead and go after vacancies, prioritize them before you would actually take an active employee out of the city to a vista. So with that, we have uh, produced a proposal. We'll turn it in tomorrow to you. We gave you a draft. Uh, other than Mr. McCann, what we would like to consider to uh, look at, and then we'll give you another uh, version of it tomorrow, so you can review, and with the hopes of that CBA's contention is to avoid all layoffs if possible, other than those that are related to workload. If it's workload related, then hope with the hopes that we've done in uh, other departments, shift those positions possibly to another position that's vacant, and retrain the individual and retain them. We, we believe that we can prove to you with numbers and actual facts that we can actually have a surplus after we get done with this that would enhance the general fund reserves. So we're compiling that right now. We'll have that to you tomorrow for your review for the next uh, hopeful workshop rather than vote. We would also like to have more time to review this information with you, more input with your staff and with council to rather than take something this serious and go ahead and just do it in one, one night and vote on another night, we would go ahead and work with you over the next couple weeks and do it in a timely manner. We don't have a time frame here we have to hit, but we want to have more input with you into each item and see if we can come to uh, agreement on that without opening up our contracts so we can come to agreement and then during this process after is sit down with you and look at the whole budget process line item by line item and see how to attack this problem. What we've been doing is going ahead and we have formed a one path fix for this. And the fix you have is on the backs of your employees. Either you do it by staffing levels or you do it by wages. You have not entered anything else into this mix that I can see that solves the problem. You know, our spending habits have to be part of the problem. We need to look at our spending habits in the general fund especially and see where are we spending our money, identify the problem, and I'm not an expert at it. We have people here that can do that. Let's sit together and figure out how we solve this problem rather than just all on the backs of the employees. You force you. your, your managers to go ahead and do this. Thank yes. you. We're going to move right along. All right. Okay. Mr. Price. Thank you, Dave. First, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to give an us to voice our opinions and some talk with you tonight. I'd like to thank the council members that supported labor and employees and the working families here with their vote on resolution on anti-injury item one. I really appreciate their support. CBA has long time supported the city of Chula Vista. In times when there's been prior financial crisis, the CBA has been there, taking the financial hit to help the city. We believe we need to have a city that's strong and financially stable for the benefit of all of us, the employees and the residents. We're committed to that. When we looked at the fine work that the BRT did, and they did a lot of good work in that, we looked at it and we will reorganize the list so that we could meet the financial goals of the city without laying off the value of employees that are providing the services the city so desperately needs. We'd like you all to take the opportunity and the time to look at the list that we provided and the new one we'll provide tomorrow and work with all the bargaining units so that we can meet our financial goals and address the crisis now without layoffs, without putting on an extra burden on the city employees. <coughs> Thank you very much. I'll give up the rest. Oh, okay. Thank you. My name is Chuck Schrader. I've been working for the city of Chula Vista for the last 16 years. Now, everyone knows who the firemen are. Everyone knows who the police are. But not everyone knows who the Chula Vista Employees Association are and who we represent. We are the librarians. We are the custodians. 
We are the gardeners. We are the backbone of the police and the fire department. We do the paperwork that's assigned to those agencies. Uh, we're the ones that do the fingerprinting and uh, search all the evidence so the police know who to arrest. We're the ones that take care of all the evidence so that court cases get to court. We're the ones that uh, take care of parks and rec. We're the ones that take care of the mechanics so that the cars and the police and cars and the uh, fire trucks are still stay on the road. We are the backbone of the city. And uh, after, uh, you can take a look at all the different uh, media groups that the city was represented by this forum. Uh, our group is the least paid. Now, as a result, most of our members live here in Chula Vista. Most of our members live in paycheck to paycheck. Most of our members, if they were to be laid off, there would be a very big financial crisis for them. They'd be the ones most likely to have problems with their mortgages. They're the ones that would be most likely to be default on their mortgages if they lost their jobs. And the city's problem right now, as I understand it, is the fact you have too many homes that's in foreclosure, and people are not paying the mortgage on those homes, the taxes on those homes, and it's causing a tax drain on the city, and you're not having enough permits being made. I have a recommendation for you that I think you should seriously consider. Sometimes when we have a disaster, a stairs is right in the face, we have opportunities that we may not see. We recently had this fire storm. 1,500 people lost their jobs. Now, a lot of people, they lost, they lost their homes, I'm sorry. A lot of people <coughs> lost their homes, and the areas where they lost their homes is when they burnt out for six months or a year before vegetation can start growing. That means those areas are going to smell like an ashtray for the next six months to a year. A lot of people are not going to want to move back into those areas. We have homes here in Chula Vista. And we have land where we can develop and build new homes. Like your person over here mentioned, we have less people moving to Chula Vista right now. We need to take advantage of this opportunity. <coughs> Instead of looking for ways of cutting our expenditures by laying people off, which is only going to make your problems even worse, I recommend that maybe the city should look in other terms, look outside the box. And one way of looking outside the box is to look and see these people who have had their homes burned out. I'd like to point out that the three worst fires in Mr. Schrader. County was in 71, four years ago at the Cedar Park, and this year during the fire storms. And we did very well in all three of those fires. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Schrader.